So thanks to blockchain and tokenization, we can reduce the costs of creating, issuing, and managing securities by over 90%. Banks, custodians, transfer agents, broker-dealers, and these other service providers can give their clients new and fresh experiences, and we can create new securities and new financial instruments that previously weren't possible. So some new cool things that we could do. You could take out a $100 million loan against a $1 billion bond that you've pledged as collateral without ever having to walk into a bank branch, without ever having to talk to a banker, without ever having to sign a form. Uh, you could uh, have a private security where you have, let's say, 1,000 investors. And if you wanted to pay a dividend to those investors, instead of sending 1,000 wire transfers, that costs you thousands of dollars in fees and might take weeks depending on the jurisdiction of your investors. With our technology, you could now pay a dividend to those 1,000 investors in about six seconds for a few dollars in fees. Um, now, you can think about some new instruments you might want to create because of that. Maybe you want to create an instrument that pays dividends every day or every hour, or every second. Or you could use smart contracts and automatically trigger a dividend if a certain revenue milestone is hit. So all these are really cool things that we can do. And so what I'll show you today is the Polymath Token Studio, which sits on the Polymesh blockchain. So we've built a blockchain called Polymesh, specifically built for regulated assets. And this is one user interface that you could use to create and manage some of these assets. So who might use this? It might be the issuer of a financial security, company raising $5 million, raising $10 million. Uh, who's used this in the past? There's been a company called Red Swan who tokenizes commercial real estate equity. So they've tokenized $2.5 billion in commercial real estate using this tech. Uh, there is a marketplace in Australia called MarketLend, which does debt offerings. Uh, they've raised a few hundred thousand dollars using this tech. But right here, what we're going to see is what it looks like to manage a security using the Polymesh blockchain. So I've created the Finnovate token here. You can see the symbol is Finnovate. Uh, there's zero supply, obviously, right now. Uh, I've embedded some reference types into the token itself. So if anybody wanted to reference the website of the issuance, or maybe they have to find the subscription documents, they can easily reference it anytime through this open source blockchain that they can see. So we'll take a look at how compliance looks like in this new world, where we don't necessarily have to have a human being sitting in the middle of every single trade to ensure, yes, this trade is allowed, no, this trade is not allowed. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up some simple rules that will govern my token. So I'm going to say I want to enforce buy lockups. I want to enforce sell lockups. I want to make sure that anyone who can hold this asset is KYC verified. Uh, I want to make sure that they're an accredited investor. I want to make sure, or they're an affiliate or exempt investor. And I want to make sure they cannot be from, I'll just pick the first one in the list, Afghanistan. So I'll submit these changes, and then I'll sign this transaction here using my wallet that talks to the Polymesh blockchain. And so we can see that cost uh, about one penny to do that transaction. And so we can do all these transactions for a few pennies every single time because we built a blockchain with a lot of this logic built into the base layer of the chain itself. So originally, all of our tech was built on Ethereum. Uh, and then we started to learn, OK, changing who can and who cannot hold the token is starting to cost 50 to to $100. It gets very computationally expensive. So we put a lot of that logic into the base layer of the chain. So now it costs a few pennies to do that. So we ha see that that rule is active now. So that's great. And now I'm going to add what's called an approved attestation provider. So who do we trust to say this address is KYC'd, this address has not been KYC'd? Well, I'm going to trust myself to do that. You could think you might also want to add one of your KYC providers. You might want to add a transfer agent, maybe a broker dealer. Any of the parties that you're working with that you would trust to make these kinds of claims, we could add here if they just send us their Polymesh account, which is that string 0x90 we see. So I'll give myself the ability to make all of these attestations after I confirm, and I sign, again, the transaction with my wallet. So if anybody has used any dApps, uh, you know, you've probably used MetaMask. You can see the little MetaMask icon there in the top. Very similar functionality. I'm signing a cryptographic proof that says, yes, 0x90 wants to do this transaction. And so block times on Polymesh, roughly six seconds, sometimes maybe around 12 seconds. We'll see this transaction has now succeeded. And so 0x90, which is the account I'm using, has the ability to make attestations about potential investors in our Finnovate token. So I'm going to go over to the attestations tab, and I'll add a new identity. So I'm going to add an attestation for a single Polymesh account. But we could do this for 30 accounts at a time if we wanted to use a CSV file. Or we could also plug into the open source Polymesh SDK and write a script and make attestations for a million addresses at a time if you wanted. So I'm going to say 0x2a. This is our investor. We'll call him John Smith. 0x2a sent me his uh, account. And yeah, he's under a buy lockup, but actually that expired a few weeks ago. He's under a sell lockup for 12 months, which is pretty common if you're doing an offering in the United States. Uh, he passed his KYC information, 
but he's going to need to refresh that in a few months. Otherwise, he won't be able to trade any tokens. And John Smith is, let's say, in the United States. And he's also accredited. So I'm going to create this attestation as an approved attestation provider about John Smith. And then because John Smith fits those compliance criteria that we created initially, John Smith will be able to hold the tokens. But let's say, for example, if John Smith was in Afghanistan or John Smith wasn't accredited, he would not be able to hold these tokens. So again, we're moving from a world where a human being has to sit in the middle of every single financial securities trade to say, yes, this is allowed. No, this is not allowed. We can just program the rules that we want. And what that allows is it allows us to unlock global liquidity pools for assets, where someone in Vietnam can trade with someone in Nigeria or whatever the case may be, where as long as it fits our compliance rules as the issuing company or maybe the bank who's doing this offering, they can accept those tokens and they can trade them. So one minute left here. We'll see how much of this we can get through, but we'll go and mint some Finnovate tokens. So we'll mint 10,000 tokens here. And then once we approve this transaction, we'll have a balance of 1,000 Finnovate tokens sitting with what we call the distribution agent. So this could be, you could think of these as like un unauthorized shares or unissued shares or issues, uh, issued shares that are still in treasury. Uh, however, this Finnovate token we've created is a structured product. So once we create our 1,000 Finnovate tokens, or our 10,000 Finnovate tokens, sorry, we'll send some of those to John Smith. So we've got our 10,000 tokens here. We'll just refresh the page quickly, and then we'll distribute those tokens to John Smith. And so. Uh, what's going to happen is we'll distribute, we'll call this distribution event Q2. Again, we'll do it to a single account, but we could do it to multiple accounts using a CSV file, 30 or so, or we could write a script and distribute tokens to uh, you know, a million accounts at one time. So again, a few pennies to do this distribution. And then what we're going to see is that if we switch to the Polymesh dashboard, we have John Smith's view where he can actually see all of these tokens coming into his wallet, and he'll accept them. So I have four more seconds. So Greg, I'm sorry, I'm going to get a bell. Uh, if anybody wants to come talk to us, please do so. We have a booth over there in the demo section. And I also want to go to the Warriors game tonight. So anybody that wants to go, hit me up. <laughs>